Tuesday the 11th of May. Hello everyone. As we slowly come out of the pandemic, people's thoughts are turning to holidays and travelling again. Do you like travelling? What kinds of, of travels have you been on? It's been rather difficult to travel much over the past two years, but things are opening up again and many of my friends, family and work colleagues are going on holidays abroad or in the UK. In the past few weeks, I've spoken to people who've been to Spain, Germany, Greece, France, the United States, Australia and the Netherlands. It seems that everyone wants to go abroad, get some sunshine, explore new places, see the sights and meet new people. Some people though are perhaps still a little bit wary of going abroad and getting on an aeroplane. Um, and so they're looking forward to exploring more of our own country here in the UK. There's so much to see and do in Scotland and the UK and that's going to be my plan for this year. I do love travelling abroad though and as a language teacher I love going to different countries and exploring as well as meeting local people and practising the language. I particularly like visiting European cities and finding out about their history and culture there, especially in France and Spain. I have many favourites for different reasons in France and Spain, where I've lived as well as taking holidays there. One of my favourites is Paris. It may be a cliché, but I love Paris, especially climbing up the hill to the Sacré-Cœur Basilica and having a wander round Montmartre. Other French cities I'm fond of are Nice, Cannes and Monaco in the south, Lyon, Nancy and Colmar in the east, and my particular favourite, Strasbourg. When I was much younger, I lived in France for a year and a half, in the region of Alsace, on the German border. I loved it there. Firstly, I lived in the city of Mulhouse, an industrial city in the south of the region. And then I lived in Strasbourg, further north, a much more cosmopolitan and um, touristy uh, city. This part of France has changed borders many times over the years, and so the people there have their own distinct personality and identity. Neither French nor German. They have their own language and their own customs, and it's fascinating to see how different things are there compared to other parts of France. In Spain, aside from the obvious Canary Islands and Balearic Islands, and then of course Madrid and Barcelona, I've also visited less well-known cities of Logroño, Burgos, Salamanca and Oviedo in the north, and Seville, Córdoba, Málaga and Granada in the south. Granada is another one of my favourite cities. The cathedral there is beautiful and the Alhambra Palace is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's commonly known as the Eighth Wonder of the World. But today I'd like to talk about another city I've been fortunate enough to visit and that is Budapest in Hungary. Eastern Old Church is twinned with Zuglo Church, a church in the suburbs of Budapest and I've been lucky enough to visit our friends in Zuglo four times now. I thought you'd like to hear a little about Zuglo Church and why it's important to us here in Easton Old. Members of the Easton Old first visited Zuglo Church back in July of 2013. There were 10 of us then and the main aim of the trip was to meet our counterparts in Zuglo Church in person and find out what their church was like. It was very hot there in July and myself and other members of the twinning group had been corresponding with them since 2011. So we were looking forward to meeting them for the first time. It was all very relaxed that first visit. We visited the church and we took part in the service on the Sunday, which we all wore tartan for, um, including Bob Kidd and his, and his kilt in the searing heat. Um, we went for lunch with the pastors and some of the elders from the church and we got to know them a little bit better. In 2015, I visited twice. Firstly, in the summer, with some of the youths from the church, 
and we took part in Zuglo's ch church's summer retreat, which takes place in the north of Hungary. And there we got to know the members better as they took part in their Bible studies and their fellowship. Um, then in October, 12 of us travelled um, back to Budapest in order to sign the formal twinning agreement between our two churches. This was a key moment in our twinning history as it sealed our cooperation formally. In the agreement, we promised to communicate with each other regularly, pray for each other, learn from each other about our, our faith and about our lives, and visit each other regularly, which until the pandemic, we managed to do. Finally, in 2018, a group of us interested in the education of children and young people in the church headed to Budapest to see the work that our me members in Zuglo Church do with the young people and get ideas for our own children's mission. Of course, in between these visits, we have had members of Zuglo Church take part in reciprocal visits to Forfer, including a Get to Know You visit and a music themed visit, where Zuglo's entire choir um, came across to Forfer and toured various churches in Scotland. Our next visit was to be uh, to invite the Zuglo members to see the work we do around the environment and caring for God's creation. We were looking forward to welcoming them again to Forfer in 2020, but of course that couldn't happen. So we hope to welcome them instead in the very near future. In the meantime, we've managed to keep up our communication very well with the help of video calls, as we've all got much better with technology over the past couple of years, and this makes keeping in touch much easier. If you'd like to join us for one of our informal catch-ups with the Zuglo Church members and find out a little bit more about them and their church and our twinning, please get in touch with me or Barbara Ann and we can pass on the details. The final place I'd like to talk to you about um, today that I've visited is Zurich in Switzerland, or more specifically, the towns of Dubendorf and Schwarzenbach in the outskirts of Zurich. There, there is a minister, Catherine Macmillan, who um, met Barbara Ann at a conference some years ago, and they became very good friends. If you've ever met Catherine, you'll understand how her and Barbara Ann got on so well. They are very alike. Catherine had been working on preparing celebrations for the anniversary of the reformer Ulrich Zwingli. And she had invited Barbara Ann and her church members to join her in Switzerland for the celebrations. I went over with Barbara Ann in the summer of 2017 to help her plan the event. And then again, I returned with a group of 16 of us um, the following year to Zurich to find out more about Zwingli and the history of the church. This was a most enjoyable trip, but what we liked best of all was getting to know our Swiss hosts and taking part in fellowship with them and in the worship service with them on the Sunday. And there was even a bagpipe player in that service. So it's been a while now since we've seen our Swiss friends in person, but some members of our congregation will have the chance to meet them again this summer when they take the trip to Oberammergau in Bavaria in Germany to see the Passion Play. Some of the congregation from Dubendorf and Schwarzenbach will also be making the trip to Germany. Hopefully, this is the start of many more trips to see our friends and churches abroad and we can also welcome them here to Scotland soon. We hope you'll keep our friends in Hungary and Switzerland in your prayers and remember the big part they play in our church life. Have a lovely week, everyone.